Hello everyone and welcome to Ink Happiness YouTube channel. Today we have with us calligraphy maestro Professor K.C. Janardhan. Whatever we say about the man will be less because he has achieved so much in life. So let's get to hear the man talk himself. Hello sir. Hello Josna. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Great. Let's begin then. Sure. Uh, so my first question is what is the difference between lettering handwriting and calligraphy okay good question let me put it across this way it starts with handwriting first which is what all of us have been taught in school to communicate it can be english or it can be any language your visual communication in the written format is handwriting once you are adept with handwriting if you have a readable handwriting excellent but then there are some of them who are artistically inclined or born with those kind of natural abilities who could go one step further when they want to design letters which are artistic aesthetic looking so from a normal handwriting you could go to from legible to readable to adorable writing and from adorable writing you can move to what is called as lettering and lettering is designing each letter so it cannot be called handwriting and to do lettering if one understands by studying what is called as typography or typography the nuances of designing a letter according to the length of the line the width of the line the thickness of the line and the weight it gets the space it encloses the space that is around it half enclosed or fully enclosed space within a letter you study all these things to design a letter that is why it is called lettering and for lettering you use different kinds of tips like a chisel tip which is called as the italic nib and then you have a left oblique in that to write the middle eastern scripts then you have a right oblique to write the indian scripts so there are varieties of nibs to produce different styles of lettering then you have a pointed nib with which you write a thick and thin line which was called as copper plate writing from there you have its own cousins which are the zenarian spencerian palmers so many of them there's a big variety so that's where you indulge in lettering and you use different tips sometimes to produce one style of lettering because it could have thick lines it could have fine lines it could have filigree work around it and you should use different tips to get that effect that is lettering so once you have mastered lettering the next logical step for quite a lot of people is to go to a stage called as calligraphy today unfortunately or fortunately the word calligraphy has gained a lot of momentum and a lot of people are talking about calligraphy 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 without understanding its true meaning including all the dictionaries in the world have failed to define what is calligraphy you take any dictionary okay. and turn the page to calligraphy it would say the art of producing beautiful writing what is beautiful beauty is in the eye of the beholder so if you don't have certain specifications or certain quantities to qualify how would you call it calligraphy now general public knows about the bodybuilding yes. mr india wrestlers bodybuilders and how do they select them there are certain parameters, parameters. miss india miss universe miss world again so many rounds and parameters so it's not just only the body or the looks but also the brains yes. it's a combination of various things and when you qualify you have quantified a few things otherwise you are not there it is not calligraphy only one person called albertin gaur has explained the process of calligraphy in a book called history of writing which is unfortunately not available today Why? that's the only book where i found the real meaning explained very beautifully for example 
what is this word calligraphy where did it come from many people call it calligraphy calligraphy here it could be calligraphy in south india somebody says calligraphy kali means empty graphy ha huh? and somebody in another south indian language calligraphy kali means making fun of it so all kinds of things have happened to calligraphy mm-hmm. calligraphy is a word that originates from the greek language kalos graphen kalos means beautiful graphen is to write but then any beautiful writing does not qualify to become calligraphy mm-hmm. there are several elements that need to combine it's just not that fine writing is calligraphy today majority of the people if they look at somebody who writes beautifully or it's fine writing oh calligraphy 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 style calligraphy style oh, they are so excited yeah. because they don't know the truth the technicalities involved yes so it's just like you know somebody who sees a red car and says ferrari ferrari, ferrari. <laughs> yeah. and somebody buys a red car and tweaks their uh, engine and has a exhaust which gives a big noise i am yeah. owning ferrari i am schumacher sorry this is what has happened to public who are not aware of the truth and albertin gore goes further to explain what are the several elements that need to combine the first thing is the attitude of society to writing mm. more so today in the digital world what is the attitude of people towards writing is it required or not because everybody is succumbing to these digital gadgets so attitude of writing you, you need to have that passion to write appreciation of writing and its relevance i for detailing yes so your attitude if it is right your altitude is high mm. after the attitude of society to writing it should be a very healthy attitude you move to the next one which is called as definite mathematically based rules and regulations about the line and the space the interrelativity or the relationship between line and space what i said earlier and how you really are trying to create those right proportions to give you that visual effect mm. second point and the third point is the tools that are used for writing it can be pens it can be dip and write nibs it can be brushes it can be a variety of tools that need to be used on a variety of surfaces it could be paper it could be plastic it could be wood it could be glass on various things you need to use various tools therefore a person who indulges in this art form needs to have the mastery of the script when i say script in each style he or she should know the capital letters the lower case letters the numbers and the punctuations and then should know what tip to be used for what surface this mastery should come in and beyond that the calligrapher should be in harmony with himself or herself and the tools that are being used that harmony should be there and then should be in tune with the cultural aspect his or her own culture and albertin gore goes further to say only three civilizations have produced true calligraphy okay. the first one being from the middle eastern region it is arabic which is the forerunner to calligraphy then comes chinese pictograms all the eastern scripts which are all pictograms brush calligraphy the most rigid ones are the roman which we follow when we write english or any other european language okay these are the three civilizations which are created but roman is more rigid and more difficult because there's less of flexibility in it mm-hmm. now this information cannot be found in any other book i have got a big collection of books on the subject no other book has given such an explanation so beautifully as albertin gaud did so lack of such information has misled a lot of people to believe that lettering is calligraphy today of the 100 people you meet who say i am a calligrapher 
they are either a amateur or a novice who has got into lettering or somebody is a semi-professional. There are many people who I met who say, I'm a professional calligrapher. The question that I ask is, do you pay professional tax first? If you're a professional calligrapher, how long have you made a living by only writing and earning? And that's when you can call yourself a professional calligrapher. You do a one-off job or a, some kind of a assignment here and there and say, I'm a professional calligrapher. I'm sorry. That's not professionalism. And how good are you with your customer service? Many artists fall back when it comes to customer service. Nobody delivers on time and nobody gives you the right kind of quality that was promised. Very few do that. And that's why they're right there on top. So calligraphy has been completely diluted today because of lack of information. And it requires a lot of practice to get there. Anything and everything that is written with these kind of pens, even the pen manufacturing companies have started calling it calligraphy. They should call it lettering instruments. Calligraphy is a status that you attain when you perform. It has a spiritual dimension attached to it, without which you cannot become a calligrapher or whatever you have written can be qualified as calligraphy. What is that spiritual dimension? You need to know that the whole world is made up of energy. Let me ask you, what is God? Who is God? How do you define God? He's an energy within me, according to me. Okay. Somebody who tells me or my instincts. Okay. Most religious leaders have defined God as God can neither be created nor destroyed. Energy. God can be transforming himself or herself from one form to the other form without any gain or loss. And God is omnipresent. This is what the religious leaders do. This is the exact uh, description of energy in physics. <laughs> True. I am coming there. Yes. Quantum physics in 7th or 8th standard talks about conservation, law of conservation of energy. And what you said is right, energy is within you. So, your good thoughts are within you. Your bad thoughts and evil thoughts are also within you. So, when you have to transfer your good thoughts or the positive energies from within you, your head thinks, your heart feels and your hand should translate it into writing. Therefore, the head, the heart and the hand should work in harmony with that right kind of rhythm. And to go further, if people understand what is a ethereal body, you have sheets when you capture the person's aura. There are sheets next to your body in different colors and that talks about the aura that is there around you and you indulge when you go to a higher plane of meditation what is called as astral travel. Astral travel with your ethereal body should happen when you are getting into something very serious called as calligraphy where you are physically present but mentally absent here because you have taken off from this planet wherever you are and you are traveling in that astral plane. Your mind is calm, cool and collected in a serene atmosphere and your mind is only looking at that text that you are going to be writing. Your mental monitor is looking at it. Your heart is feeling what you are going to write. So the thought and the feeling which need to be transferred into your writing. Now what happens I will tell you. When you hold that dip and write nib. True calligraphy is also done only with a dip and write nib, not with a free-flowing fountain pen. You breathe in and breathe out. All of us living beings breathe and breathe in and breathe out. If you stop, you're dead. So, giving life to that calligraphy means when you breathe in, your oxygen gets in and goes to your lungs and purifies your blood. And your blood goes all over your body from head to toe through your wings and when you are participating in this activity the blood that is flowing from your brain to your heart to various parts of your body also reaches your fingertips yes. 
the purified blood with oxygen breathing in breathing out now we bring in the synchronization of when you breathe in your lungs expand and the upward stroke happens when you breathe out the downward stroke you need to synchronize the writing with your breathing it's like yoga it is a higher level of yoga, yoga. and meditation, meditation. that is breathing. that is why you need to be in a serene atmosphere and you get into an audio visual vacuum as though you are in a bubble you don't listen to the sounds outside you don't see what's happening outside you are in your own world how many of them can raise their levels of concentration to this level and not be disturbed by a visual movement or a noise externally when you are in that state of mind and then those beautiful thoughts are being transferred into writing it is like your blood flowing through your veins reaching the tip of your fingers and transferring your energies into your writing so any writing which has this positive energies transferred to it becomes calligraphy because it has your positive energies loaded in it and then it becomes mesmerizing to the onlooker magical and magnetic it draws you and holds you there now, when it does that it raises itself to the level of what is called as calligraphy any artwork or any writing that does not do this to you is less lettering it's just lettering not calligraphy it's not art then. and you attain a status of a calligrapher when you have indulged in this process and produce that piece which is magnetic mesmerizing and of course yes. <laughs> if it's not aesthetically pleasing it don't hold you yes. look at sculptures yes. many people have sculpted a lot of figures there are only a few which have the right proportions which hold you the moment you see the sculpture oh so captivating mesmerizing people say that now calligraphy also is something like that i hope i've made it quite clear about what is le i mean handwriting lettering and calligraphy for the youngsters to know i would say i would give another analogy because most of them are into bikes and all that right yeah. learning how to cycle properly and balance the cycle properly and not fall off is handwriting yeah. which is like the day to day use going to a gearless scooter or a motorcycle is like going to lettering and your super bikes are like calligraphy why i bring super bikes there's, there's a slight difference in this analogy that when you go to higher levels of calligraphy it is very slow and steady and rhythmic whereas riding a bike is faster but then man and machine has to combine together the higher level of concentration of handling the motorcycle at that speed if you make a split second mistake you're finished yes. you're gone so same thing over here there what happens is the machine can kill you but here what you've done is you kill the art form i hope you got the analogy, analogy. Yes. now we are not here to kill an art form we are here to celebrate it we are here to take it to the greatest heights mm. and restore its pristine glory that it had in the asterias and that is why true calligraphy remained in the monasteries because of the spiritual dimension you find the buddhists you found it in the roman catholic churches and you found it in the muslims i mean they are the first ones to exploit calligraphy arabic and that's where spirituality is they understood and practiced it when it was brought down to the common man the dilution has happened now let people understand it clearly and that is why i also keep saying calligraphy has no place in schools it is ridiculous when schools say we teach calligraphy we teach calligraphy to children how can they understand this energy fields and transfer of energy unless you have experienced it theory is something but practicing is different so please tell the schools please don't make yourself buffoons by saying we teach calligraphy in schools it's ridiculous it can't be done because they still don't have that kind of experience in life to understand 
the energy fields and transfer of energies it only happens with a lot of experience that you get in life and mental maturity that's required to understand it therefore i appeal please stop using the word calligraphy in schools please concentrate on handwriting which can have the clarity to write and readability is important if somebody is able to move from readability to adorability excellent wonderful that's what needs to be done i hope i have done justice to this and i hope the listeners are clear now between handwriting lettering and calligraphy don't try to mix and match i am coming to the other four elements not so well known but in the recent times graphology graphonomy graphotherapy has become another big thing yes. somebody says show me your handwriting i'll tell you your character yes <laughs> graphology okay fine you can find out a person's character by looking into their writing and then there are certain kinds of sizes pressure various parameters are looked into and say this is your character 60 to 70% it's an indicator like astrology numerology mm. gemology all these ologies are only indicators don't take it 100% to your heart there was a breakaway group which said oh graphology is like astrology not accurate now we are going to be even more accurate so they said we call ourselves graphonomers like astronomy please no offense meant to anybody even in astronomy recently is so launched a project to go explore mars hmm. and what happened there there was a small vehicle called vikram and they lost vikram they're still not able to find vikram on mars so nothing is 100% exact don't get carried away by these things and there came another area called graphotherapy oh my goodness these people are going overboard i'm sorry to say this Obsessed. people can disagree with me it's all right but i have not found sense in it because there's no proof in it saying that if i change your handwriting you can become rich hmm? that's what is graphotherapy graphotherapy and you have got a hole in the heart i can close it you have a kidney problem i'll cure it then what are all the doctors doing in various uh, hospitals oh, and research centers so <laughs> they have <laughs> gone overboard this is i feel for gullible people people who think that they have not succeeded in life they want to lean upon something so graphotherapy comes in so they plant a belief system in you and after the belief system is planted into your mind mm. anything and everything that happens after that you will attribute it to this belief system yes. if something good happens oh see only because of this it happened something bad happens they say oh it had 1000x force with it it came to destroy you but because you follow this it has reduced it to only 100x this is the interpretations they give but then with my experience graphotherapy somebody said in my signature don't use a underscore don't use two dots why you will never have money you will never have this never have that i said excuse me life is not all about money what you come in acquire and give back to society is important it's not the money that you have and if you look back the at the interpretation how did this underscore and two dots come in yesterday years we were writing with the dip and write quill yes. and when you finish your signature maybe yes. the ink got over so you dipped it again there was extra ink so to you know use up that extra ink you drew a underline underscore and because there was some more ink you put in two dots to empty the ink yes. that's how it came in but then people interpret things in their own way and as long as there are gullible people they fall prey the last one is called question document examination which comes under forensic science to detect forgery if somebody has copied your signature okay. on a check or on a legal document there they study it rationally now according to me people can differ with me graphology graphonomy graphotherapy is playing with emotions mm -hmm. it's the emotional quotient mm -hmm. when you look at forgery it is a rational way of trying to track the entry stroke and the movements of the strokes the pressure variations and where it has exited and compare two signatures whether they are the same everywhere if they don't match it said it doesn't match mm -hmm. if it matches you say it's the same author now when you present this kind of 
reports to the court finally it is the judge who has to take the decision this is a 100% rational approach called question document examination where the document which is in question is examined along with handwriting or signatures you also examine the age of the paper the seals and stamps over there the language used a variety of things are studied to find whether there are some telltale signs left behind how do you differentiate between the original and the copy or the fake i hope it's all clear now and many people would say oh you are handwriting expert huh? then you will make out my character oh. excuse me handwriting expert you need to say clearly whether you are a handwriting expert means only with basic handwriting or if you are talking about character analysis it is graphology graphonomy or somebody gives you remedies which is graphotherapy and you are handwriting expert huh? or your fingerprint expert you can make out even that is interchanged and many people call it calligraphy calligraphy and somebody asked me the other day oh i heard that you are a choreographer huh yes <laughs> choreographer no i told them right or wrong you used the right word and i'll give you the interpretation mm. to an extent i am a choreographer because Alfred Fairbanks the founder of the Italic Society of Handwriting in England said handwriting is the dance of the pen on paper so it is kind of choreography but then i said i don't teach dance i teach how to let the pen dance on paper it's a great interpretation well jyotsh i hope i have done justice to all the seven and i hope all the viewers will get a perfect clarity my request is don't interchange them and don't mix and match them mm. they don't go well okay so uh, you pretty much covered everything but i still have one question for you what are your thoughts about the seven day crash courses on calligraphy yeah that one is okay the question is about seven day crash course on calligraphy any skill that you want to learn and master be it singing dancing or even handwriting takes years of practice to train your muscle memory yes. and those fine movements which are important seven days any crash course as it says will crash after the course your skill will crash and i don't know it's become a fashion fad that during the holiday season or the summer holidays people are opening up calligraphy crash courses camps they are doing great injustice to this art form called calligraphy and online courses again they are only demonstrating they cannot really transform you now what is happening is it's like a circus that's going on all over for somebody to make a quick buck in a short time yesterday there were calligraphy courses in england and it was a full time 2 years course and after you finished a full time 2 years course in calligraphy you had to work under a master calligrapher for two more years to learn the nuances and how do you do it practically unless you have done it practically it doesn't happen so generally it takes about 6 years to become a true calligrapher what are they talking about 7 days you can't even get two lines straight so what is happening is if i'm going to talk fast and unknown really what is that cacophony yes so in 7 days cacography is happening cacophony. like cacophony yes there's no clarity you haven't understood the subject is not sunk in you're not absorbed enough to recall and reproduce unless you put something into practice and again a lot of practice is required let me also tell you from the psychologist observation any skill that you learn you need to do it for 21 days they tell you yes. because it, it has to habit. it has to first store in your mind temporary memory site in the frontal lobe of your brain if you've done it again and again for 21 days minimum it moves to your permanent memory site at the back of your brain that is minimum but for certain kinds of art forms and skills based on the individual's capacity of absorption 
and retention it can vary the time frames can only extend it cannot be done in a short time now people know this you want some lovely mangoes you need to first plant a seed nurture the seed seedling comes up and then you have the you know tree coming up and then you get the fruit you got to wait for it you just can't plant a seed today and in a week's time you can't see the tree and you can't have your fruit within three weeks i'm sorry it's a lot of injustice that is done because again i am not trying to blame these people also they're all quarter baked half baked people again why did they become quarter baked and half baked because they didn't get the right knowledge it's not available freely everywhere to get the right knowledge and understand it and that's why anybody's perception they thought so so that is it i think something and i call it calligraphy then that's calligraphy everybody's looking for shortcuts these days correct so art forms are getting short circuited shortcut will short circuit well okay then well sir thank you so much and for our viewers watch the videos of ink happiness for 21 days and make it a habit thank you so much sir we are very lucky to have you here today thank you pleasure is mine and i enjoyed talking to you and informing the viewers of ink happiness may you start inking more and the style i've worn especially for this for interview this. because it captures the different colors of inks that you could use and really get that happiness cheers thank you sir